turn to the right. This is not anything against lefties. In fact, in halacha, a lefty's left side would be considered his right. This concept of right indicates in Jewish thought something which is strong. So whenever we do a mitzvah, we're encouraged to do it with our right hand, with strength, not to do it in a lackluster way, but to put ourselves all the way in and shake it all about. That's the idea, except for two mitzvot, one from the Torah and one from the rabbis. Let's deal first with the one from the rabbis because it's our subject for the day. In fact, it's Hanukkah. We light the menorah on the left side of the door. Why? Why would you do a mitzvah? Especially the mitzvah of Hanukkah, which celebrates the victory that we've had, the strength that Am Yisrael showed in defeating the Greeks in that space. Why would you celebrate that by lighting on the left side of the door? Now, hmm, I know some of you are thinking, yeah, well, the left side of the door is the right side of the door for someone who's entering the doorway from the other way around. And that is true. However, even in the lighting itself, we light first on one side, and then where do we go? We start with the left, and then light all the way down to the right. So we find that in this mitzvah, there is some sort of a preference to the left side, to the side of weakness. Why would that be? I'll bet you that none of you has ever met a Maccabee. And I don't mean one of these people who are playing sports in the Jewish version of the Olympics, which is the height of irony. However, this idea of a Maccabee in our society is something that none of us have ever come across. And it's not by accident. The Talmud tells us a tragic story. It describes a terrible scene. The daughter of one of the Maccabees, the line of the Chashmonaim, who had saved the Jewish people through the miracle of Hanukkah and then seized the power of the Jewish people for themselves. They became the kings of Israel, effectively. This girl is running down the hallway, being pursued by people who had led a mutiny, a rebellion against the king. It was led by a servant, by a slave of the kingdom. And she runs up to the balcony, threatened by the fact that this servant was going to take her and force her to be his wife. And she screams off the balcony, if anyone tells you that they are from the house of Hashmonaim, in other words, a descendant of the Maccabees, you should know that they are lying because I am the last of the line. And with that, she jumps off the roof and the Maccabee family is no more. This tragedy seems so difficult to come to terms with. These are a group of people who risked everything to save the Jewish people. Why would they come to such a horrible end? What had happened along the way? What had they lost? What had they gotten wrong? The answer is fascinating and explains the question that we began this video with. You see, most of us imagine the Maccabees were warriors, massive, strong, skilled in the art of warfare. This is how we imagine these people who brought about such a miraculous victory over an army, many times its strength and many times its size. But actually, the Maccabees were Kohanim. They were priests who served in the temple. The way I imagine them is much like the great rabbis that you might see walking the streets of Jerusalem today with long beards, very pious look in their face, holding maybe some books underneath their arms. That's who the Kohanim were. Except one day, Chazal tell us, our rabbis tell us about the scene. The head of the Kohanim is standing there and a Greek officer comes in demanding that they take a pig and slaughter it on the Mizbech, on the altar. Only in order to add insult, to injury, to humiliate the Jews even further by taking an animal that they themselves would not eat and force them to bring it as a sacrifice to their God. The Maccabi Kohen steps forward in this moment of tension. He reaches into his robes and pulls out a knife. The Greek general standing there thinks that finally he's got one of the Kohanim to play along in his dastardly game. But instead of using that knife to bring the korban, the sacrifice, the Kohen jumps from the Mizbeach, plunges the knife into the heart of the general and screams with this great cry, Mi chamocha ba'eli mashem. I imagine a cry that echoed back in time, Mi lashem elai, that Moshe Rabbeinu once shouted as well, Whoever is on God's side, stand with me. 
And so begins the Jewish struggle for freedom from their Greek oppressors. The war begins. The miracles pour down. The lights of the Hanukkah candles shine bright for the first time, something that we will emulate until the end of time. It sounds like the fairy tale ending, but what happens is more like a nightmare. The Kohanim forget their role. You see, in the Jewish nation, kingdom is reserved for the descendants of Yehuda, of David. Those people are ultimately meant to be the kings of the Jewish people, not the Kohanim. The Kohanim have their work, their purpose. And if they fulfill their purpose, then they can get to the highest heights. But playing someone else's role is actually cutting yourself off of your own reality. For a people that believes in a divinely ordained world, then we understand that presence proves purpose. If you are here, you're supposed to be doing something. But conversely, purpose provides presence. When you are fulfilling your mission, doing what you were put here in this world to do, that enlivens a person. It gives them the strength, the spiritual and physical power to exist in their best self. Generation after generation, of the Kohanim being someone other than themselves had cut them off from their very life source, from being the people that they were meant to be, until eventually the horrible end. The lighting of the Hanukkah candles symbolizes this. It was a tremendous victory, one that we are so grateful for, thankful for, celebratory of. However, Never should we think that this is what the strength of the Jewish people is supposed to be. The sword, the bow and arrow, the gun, the rifle, the bomb, that was never supposed to be our lot. Hakol kol Yaakov, the voice is the voice of Jacob. Torah, mitzvot, morality. This is what we were created to do. Hayadayim yedei esav, but the strength and military might, that was supposed to belong to someone else. Does that mean we sit there and just take it? Absolutely not. But as is the name of Israel's army, Tzva Haganah Israel, Israel Defense Force, even the name of our army dictates that it is only meant to be one of defense. We're not supposed to go on the offense. We're never supposed to forget that this is something that we do in order to survive in the second place, never in the first place. So we light these candles from the left side, indicating that we can do it if we need to, but it is not what we deem to be our yad yamin, our right-handed strength. In every person's life, you will experience times where the dreams that you've had have come to fruition, where what you wished and what you fought for came true. The challenge in those moments is to remember who you were before this dream began to unfold. In every dream, you need to play multiple parts and wear different hats. But as life throws various things at you and you adopt a various role each time trying to be the person you need to be in that situation, it's so important to remain you.